The Institute raises little predators. Breaking news, a dark family secret is exposed. It's like the epitome of evil. Breaks my heart to think about the girls. Well, how deep do we go? Because that's a, that's a rabbit hole. Man. From inception to finish on Shiny Happy People, Duggar Family Secrets, it took about three years all in. Our crew in Shiny Happy People was about like, uh, probably 20 to 50 people at times. For the show, I believe we traveled to about three states. So we traveled to uh, Savannah, we traveled to Atlanta, and we traveled to Arkansas. I've watched at least over 50 episodes of the Duggar family's show. TLC created a PR show for Gothard's teachings. You've probably heard of the Duggar family. Everyone knew who the family was. Why did we name it Shiny Happy People and what does that signify? You know, the Duggars kind of presented this shiny, happy facade. And underneath the surface is actually this really insidious organization called the IBLP, the Institute in Basic Life Principles. So, you know, what looks shiny and happy on the surface? In actuality, there's something darker. You know, we all know the Duggars very well, but I think, you know, IBLP is this lesser known entity. Can you tell me a little bit more about that process of finding other members of the church and, and being able to speak to them? It really became a word of mouth thing. You know, you talk to one person and they're like, oh my God, you need to talk to this person. So I talked to a journalist um, off the bat who wrote a great article um, breaking down Gothard's teachings and its influence and, you know, a lot of the abuses that were going on. So I connected with him. He connected me to another person. And I think yeah, it just became kind of that sort of thing. You talk to one person and um, it opens up a lot of other doors as well. Yeah. And it also, just to clarify, it's not a church, it's not one church, which is very interesting and kind of the insidious aspect of it. And that's why I think it could spread so wide because it was it didn't have a central location for the preachings. It kind of went all over the world, actually, to different churches in all denominations. I think that's like what Julia said makes it so insidious because when you think of a cult, you think of like, you know, there's a centralized location, there's a church, there's a compound. So, and Gothard didn't have that. So his teachings are really the thing, the thing that was spreading was his teachings. And then of course his teachings come back to this umbrella of authority structure that puts the men in ultimate control over their families and then the women and children having to be submissive to that authority. And of course, as we explore in the show, that kind of system is, is really ripe with abuse. It would make perfect sense that sitting down here today would be too much. What was it that recently changed? Yeah, I mean, doing an interview like this isn't easy and like I didn't want to do it. Knowing what we know about the Duggar family and how they operate amongst each other, how they have in the past, especially on TV. What were your expectations going into making this uh, documentary? Well, you know, going into any documentary, my, you know, I kind of have to clear my expectations and go in with a neutral palette because we're talking to survivors. We're talking to people that may be, have the other point of views. We're talking to people who are not totally deconstructed in their ideology yet. So you know, knowing what I knew about the Duggar family, which is not a lot going in, was just to find out more. Reaching out to the Duggar family, we were definitely like super, super grateful to Jill and Amy as well for coming forward and especially Jill being brave enough to trust us with her story. But yeah, I think, you know, understandably, there's going to be hesitation. Like I said, you know, doing this is really daunting and it puts you in a vulnerable position and it puts you, you know, back in front of the camera again. So at the end of the day, we're just grateful that they sat down with us. We have for every one of you, the answer. Thank you for agreeing to talk to us. There's a story that's going to be told and I would rather be the one telling it. What was one of the most surprising things that you were able to learn? I think for us, just how far and wide the ideology really went. So, you know, Gothard's teachings have ended up in public schools. Um, they've ended up in the military and police programs. That was super shocking, just really learning about how far these tentacles spread. Yeah, it's appalling the way that these things, are, there's a form of fantasy in all of the ideology that always goes back to the root which is patriarchy and authoritarianism. So, you know, being a woman working on this doc, it was really important for me to give voice to the survivors and understand really what they were taught and the intellectual abuse involved in that. 
as well as sexual abuse, but the conspiracy like theories that you mentioned are ripe for discussion and should you know, see the light of day. The biggest feature of Bill Gothard's teachings is authority. Kids obey the parents, wives obey their husbands. Everyone obeys Bill Gothard. Obviously there are, you know, years that take place between um, when the first allegations are brought against Josh and when he's finally arrested. How much of that in that time would you attribute to any IBLP involvement or political assistance um, or his family's level of fame being able to assist him in evading like repercussions for so long? Yeah, I mean, we found out that the police officer that Jim Bob contacted way, way early on when this was first found out internally in the family actually was arrested for child pornography himself. There is an epidemic with, you know, sex addiction and patriarchy in this country. We do not talk about openly enough. And I think even if you're in a very controlled ideology like the IBLP, or if you are not, you know, our society really looks the other way when it comes to sexual abuse, as we've we've found out with Me Too. Thank God we've had something like that. But this is just a continuation of it. And I think there was, you know, especially with IBLP, it is the archetype for covering up any type of abuse. What is important in this show is to see that and to then see how in other parts and other cultures, it's still happening in just different forms, you know, toxic positivity and all these kind of like catchphrases that are outside in kind of coastal worlds still have that same shiny, happy people veneer that is a toxic element that's not really talking about the core of people's pain or emotions or strengths. And, you know, just these survivors that came forward in this documentary have so much courage to speak publicly on camera. And, you know, I, I, we hope that it will encourage more people to, you know, have the bravery to express what has happened to them or their intentions for moving on with their life from an abusive system and to help others. It will help others to, you know, join forces. And like um, one of our characters says, there will be people to catch you. What is going on here? The shiny, happy images is the sugar, and we're all high on it. They were just deceiving us all. The real story is a much bigger one. Now is the time. <laughs>